Hello there friends and welcome! For yet another shifter guide for Pathfinder Enhanced, we have this time a Lich Shifter build. You'll get to be both a vampiric-like wolf with free trip on every single one of its numerous bite attacks, including attacks of opportunity, to easily knock down and destroy enemies. And for enemies immune to trip, you even get to become an undead vampiric dinosaur too. A very fun raptor, with the highest amount of attacks per round possible for a shifter. 6 main attacks together with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 extra ones for a total of 11 attacks per round. So you'll be a true meat cleaver. The Lich Path will provide us not only with amazing defenses including extreme hit points, we have higher than a thousand here, together with buffs like the classic Vampiric Blade which not only highly increase your damage, but also let you regenerate close to 30 hit points per every single one of your strikes and get this, it will apply to all of your shifter natural attacks no matter the form. The lich powers like death rush will also serve to highly increase your damage. We can hit for higher than 200 on a normal strike, even without critical hits. And as with any shifter, you can even achieve amazing armor class without ever spending anything into it. So without further ado, let us get into our Vampiric Wolf and Dinosaur Shifter Lich build. Now for the Lich Shifter build, I want to go with the normal shifter, that's right, no archetypes. As a matter of fact, the base shifter is, as I've explained before, extremely solid. Sure, it might not get as unique bonus as a Child of the Manticore and Fae Form, but it still has a lot going for it, especially with all the stacking shifter minor aspects you can pick. And with this build I wanted to show you how powerful it could be, just by itself. For race, I recommend you go with humans as usual, because shifter's main weakness is, well, besides their lack of spells, no bonus feats whatsoever. With human we can overcome that, even early game. But since two of the feats I'll be picking now aren't that needed, you can also go with another race if you prefer. For the background, as always, research and pickpocket for the bonus fee initiative. As far as ability scores, Strength will be our main stat. We want 19 as a Lich. Then I would dump Intelligence, that's right, a dump Lich Shifter. Together with 14 Wisdom, 14 Dexterity, and to strike a decent balance with the fact that Liches eventually will have their hit points come from Charisma, although once again it's super late game, I'll be going with 12 Charisma and 12 Constitution. For the rest points, just go with 8 Intelligence, which provides bonus skill points as a human or any other race. When it comes to skills, athletics because of our high strength, then the usual mobility and stealth, since we can achieve pretty high dexterity too as a shifter. Trickery, I usually just leave it for Camellia, I mean she already comes fully specializing to it as early as level 1. There's also lore nature and perception if you prefer. For your level 1 feats, the classic package for two-handed characters, even if you aren't two-handing. Power attack and cleave. Power attack is always a must-have. It's not that needed early on, but eventually the extra bonus to damage can really add up because it applies to every one of your attacks and scales based on your base attack bonus progression, shifters have the highest, together with other classes like Paladin and Fighter. As far as Cleave, it's here mostly for Cleaving Finish which provides us with an extra attack, so it's great for the forms that don't have as many attacks per round. Also, because you can only change into the actual animal forms at level 4, Cleave can provide a lot of use earlier. Shifters start with simple weapon proficiency, which means they can equip long spears. Long spears are rich weapons, so they can attack from safety behind your tanks and other allies. When you combine spears with cleave, you'll have two attacks per round, just as if you were using a shifter's claws. Which you can use, by the way. But the claws, well, have the main disadvantage of needing you to be very close to the enemy, so it's more dangerous early on. For your first shifter aspect, you have two choices, the only difference is the order you'll pick at level 5. We have either Wolf or Mammoth. Mammoth will already start by providing a bonus to Strength, which can increase both your attack rolls and damage, while Wolf increases the power of your natural attacks. Also, Wolf has the best early major form, at least to me, because it lets you trip for free on every bite attack. In case you didn't know, trip is amazing, it's one of the best forms of crowd control, debuffing, Extra damage, extra attacks, it's everything added at once. If you're wondering why pets like the dog and the wolf were so overpowered, it's because they trip for free, exactly what you can do on all of your bite attacks as a shifter wolf. If you pick wolf now, you'll be able to change into it as early as level 4, 
Otherwise, if you pick Memo first, you can get Wolf at 5, and well, you would have to wait until level 5 to shift into one. So it's up to you. Overall, early game, the bonuses from Mammoth are slightly better, unless you plan on attacking with your claws early before you can shift into an animal form. But, you know, it's just a plus 2 to strength anyway, so not really the end of the world. I'll just be picking Wolf to make it simpler. For Deity, any that allows the Lich alignments, you might as well go with Urgatoa because she has unique Lich dialogue. And then you have to be neutral evil. As a human with 8 intelligence, you'll gain a bonus skill point every now and then. It can go anywhere you want, including use magic device, since you'll have a slight bonus to charisma. For level 3, cleaving finish for the extra attack per round. And this is great because it will work with all of your attacks, no matter the form you're taking, even with the normal shifter claws ability. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you want to increase on all of the other levels. At level 5, outflank is the way to go for the higher bonuses to attack rolls, and most importantly, the amazing number of extra free attacks you'll be getting as attacks of opportunity later on to improve at critical. For the other aspect, if you picked Wolf before, Mammoth now for the bonus to strength, otherwise Wolf. Just remember you cannot have two minor aspects on until level 9 through the Chimeric Aspect ability. I would rather have Mammoth on together with the Wolf Major form, because I prefer bonuses to attack rolls early. At level 6 you'll get Shifter's Fury, which you should absolutely use with your wolf form. The wolf only has but a single bite attack, so because it doesn't have any secondary attacks, when you turn Shifter's Fury on, you won't get any penalty to your attack rolls, while receiving more attacks per round, which is what you really want. Equal to your base attack bonus progression, so now you would have 2 bites, another one with the haste spell too. For a total of 3, or 4 with cleaving finish, each of these bites will trip the enemy for free, together with the damage on top of it. For level 7, lunge is the way to go. We want reach to attack enemies that are somewhat far away, and also to provide us with higher defensive capabilities. Although as a lich, starting from level 11 or 13 when you get mythic level 4 spells, You'll get the vampiric property on your weapons and will restore loads and loads of health per attack anyways. So even if you're getting hit a lot, you'll easily recover all the damage you take. But for the earlier parts of the game, like now, it can help. It also has great synergy with cleaving finish. For level 9, improves critical into bite. Bites won't have the highest critical range without the trickster path, but it will still be more than enough, especially because the way outflank works is... If your allies get critical hits, you'll also get free attacks of opportunity. So you can make up for your lower critical range through allies. Characters like Amelia, for example, with rapiers or Scylla with scimitars can achieve extreme critical range. Now that you have Chimeric Aspect, feel free to turn both the minor wolf and mammoth forms on. For level 10, as a third aspect, well, you have two choices now. This build was meant to be a Vampiric Wolf or Dinosaur, as I explained at the beginning. The Wolf has the amazing trip for free, but the Dinosaur, on the other hand, has the highest amount of attacks per round out of all of the other shifter forms we can get for the normal shifter. And at level 10, you would already get all of the extra attacks, especially when combined with Shifter's Fury. The thing is, until around level 15, which is where we get the other shifter aspect, I would much rather keep to the Wolf because Trip is just that amazing when it comes for free. Also, enemies that are immune to trip, they only start appearing way later, at around chapter 4, so level 15. That is when I would rather go for the dinosaur, for the actual dinosaur form. For now, spider is the way to go for higher armor class, if needed. Just remember, you can only have 3 on, as far as minor aspects, through greater chimeric aspect at level 14. So ideally, you would just keep to wolf for higher damage, and Mammoth for strength. For level 11, if you picked the dinosaur form at level 10, now is when you want Shifter's multi-attack. It doesn't do anything for the wolf form, but when it comes to the dinosaur form, it will enhance all of your secondary attacks, which will come with a minus 5 penalty without this, otherwise just a minus 2, whenever you activate Shifter's Fury. Otherwise, if you're still using the wolf form, Combat Reflexes is the way to go, to get even more attacks of opportunity, and at this point they are at full power, because level 11 is when almost all of your allies can get improved at critical, for higher critical range, thus more attacks of opportunity throughout flank. 
For level 13, we want something different. Natural spell. By this point, you already have the Lich spell book. I mean, you get it as early as level 10. But the earlier Lich spells, you can cast them in human form and then change shape afterwards because they are just buffs that always work. Starting from now, you'll get some spells that you want to cast during combat too. So we need natural spell for that to provide casting under the animal forms. At level 15, well, because now we'll be getting the dinosaur form, this is when you absolutely want Shifter's multi-attack. Also, at the next level, we'll get our last attack from base attack bonus progression, so Shifter's Fury will be at maximum power. And of course, the dinosaur form, once again, just in case you're fighting enemies that are immune to trip, or if you want more attacks per round. For level 17, I honestly won't bother with Shatter Defenses, because we don't really have the space, so... Improved initiative now. This is around when I get Mythic Initiative 2 during Mythic Progression. For level 19, as your last feat, I would go for Energized Wild Shape. The reason I only pick this now is because I don't think the benefit is that good that you would want to pick it earlier, especially with a build as feat start as Shifter. Also, at this point, we can just convert the extra elemental damage into Irresistible anyways, as to fully hit all enemies in the game. As far as your last aspect, we just want it for the minor bonuses because this is when we get the Shifter Capstone ability, Final Aspect, which lets us apply all of our minor aspects at once. Bonuses to Constitution at this point don't really matter for a Lich, since Charisma is what will count for our hit points. So choose between either Tiger for the bonus to Dexterity, or Wolverine for the bonus to hit points. So it's up to you, Wolverine or Tiger. I'll be going with Tiger just to show we can still have very high hit points as a Lich. It's just a dexterity at this point kind of doesn't matter much for our build. But flexing high stats on multiple stats is pretty fun. Alright, now let's discover mythic progression for our Lich Shifter. For the first ascension, close to the abyss is the way to go for the extra gore attack. Almost all of the forms can benefit from this. For mythic level 1, always master shape shifter. Plus 4 to all of your physical scores is amazing, especially because as I've said before, Constitution only stops mattering for a Lich at around Mythic 9, which is super late. For Mythic 2, the classic Mythic power attack for even higher static damage on all of our hits. Bites, claws, gores, it doesn't matter. For Mythic level 3, Ever Ready is the way to go, to empower our attacks of opportunity to the max. And remember, all of them will be Bites under the Wolf form for even more trips. Which, by the way, this will also enhance when it comes to the DC of trip, that is, to make enemies get knocked down easier, because bonuses to attack rolls also directly increase your trip power. You cannot merge as a Lich with a Shifter because you are not a full spellcaster, so you'll get a separate Lich spellbook added to your character now, which is great because one of the main weaknesses of Shifter is not having spells, with this will overcome that. As far as the Skeleton Champion, I usually prefer the Marksman, because it's a ranged character. As a no-merged Lich, you won't have many spells to heal your undead allies, so the Marksman can help because, well, it won't be getting hit. Also, most of my parties tend to be pretty melee heavy. As far as your Lich powers, Liches have three main powers that directly empower a Shifter build. They can touch, Death Rush, and Fear Control. I would rather go with Fear Control now, because it is the one that increases your attack bonus by a massive amount. It even increases damage too, but as I've said before earlier, increases to attack rolls are more important. But as I said, you can also pick Death Rush and the King Touch first if you prefer. Ideally Death Rush, because it has amazing synergy with the Wolf tripping on every Bite attack. The King Touch can certainly be delayed. For Mythic Level 4, Mythic Critical into Bites. Even under the Dinosaur form, through Shifter's Fury, you can still choose to specialize into Bites while retaining loads of extra Claw and Talon attacks. For your Skeleton upgrade, Fighter is still the best one, but sadly it was nerfed in the most recent patch. Now. You cannot pick any bonus combat feat, as you could before, so no more Shatter Defenses for free on the Skelly. You kinda have to pick one of the rather underwhelming feats here. It's just that the Skeleton, he already has the best range feats. Ideally you would pick Improved Critical, because it doesn't get it, it's just that for some strange reason notice you can't choose the weapon to specialize into, so it's kinda useless. Assuming they ever change that, you would pick Improved Critical into long bows here. I would just go for Arcane Strike, because you can later give the Skeleton spells, so at the very least, this can provide some extra damage eventually. For Weapon Focus, I cannot possibly understand why, but you can't choose both. 
so you might as well go with heavy crossbows. At least your skeleton will be versatile. You can use both bows or heavy crossbows. Weapon training, definitely bows. For mythic level 5, definitely mythic charge. And the main reason, well, you're about to see at mythic 6. For mythic level 6, you want an extra mythic ability because you can afford it. The extra mythic feats we have left, besides mythic initiative, which we can only pick at around mythic 8, aren't that good. So extra mythic... And I would just go for Archmage Armor, because it can highly increase your AC. Especially since we get to cast the Mage Armor with the separate Lich Spellbook. You can potentially pick this even earlier, at let's say Mythic 2, instead of Mythic Power Attack, if you prefer for higher AC earlier. It's just that as a Lich, well, we have Lunge as a feat to provide reach, and Lich has regeneration on every attack anyways. But the choice is up to you, I'm all about giving you choices. Now, for the second Lich Power, you absolutely want Death Rush. It's absolutely overwhelming with the Wolf form. Whenever you charge or use a combat maneuver and get this, the Wolf form has strip for free on every attack, which is a combat maneuver, the enemy will suffer an extra 1d6 points of irresistible damage per mythic rank. So essentially, it's 1d6 extra damage per rank on all of our attacks, what's not to like. It's also why we picked Mythic Charge before. Also, it works when charging too, which is great for the Dinosaur form, because even if you don't have a Scald ally to provide pounds for you for charge and full attack while under the Wolf form, the Dinosaur form does get pounds for free. And at this point, you would already have it. For Mythic level 7, I'll just go with Always a Chance so you won't fail on once. And Liches have a lot of bonuses to their attack rolls. For Mythic level 8, Mythic Initiative at last. For the second skeleton upgrade, you might as well go with Cleric for some minor self buffs, and it will work with the Arcane Strike feat we picked through the Fighter bonus feat. For Mythic level 9, you can go with anything you want here. I would just pick last 10 because why not, we have the space for it. But as a Lich, your Philactery will also bring you back. I suppose with last 10 you have double the ability to revive from death, which is pretty fun as a Lich. Truly immortal as it should be. For the last Lich power, this is when I would pick the Cane Touch which increases the damage of your natural attacks together with unarmed hits by a decent amount, 1d6 plus mythic rank, and even drains the enemy of 1 point of strength per attack. The main reason I don't pick this earlier is just that honestly, it doesn't compare with fear control and death rush, despite the fact it's a pretty good pick for polymorphed characters like Shifter. Also, your phylactery will grant deadly magic for free, which is great too. With just this, you can easily shut down even the final boss themselves. As far as Mythic level 10, you can truly pick anything you want, ideally a Mythic ability, even something like Unrelenting Assault for minor extra damage. I don't usually bother with Mythic 10 because, honestly, you only get it right before the final boss. It's a bummer. There's nothing left to do besides the first DLC after that. Alright, now let us cover gear progression for our Vampiric Wolf and Dinosaur Lich Shifter build. For the amulet, ultimately you want Valexius for the highest strength bonus possible, especially because once you fully become a Lich at Mythic 9, you won't be a valid target for legendary proportions anymore, so you won't get the size bonus to strength. And as far as Frightful Aspect, with the most recent patch it's now classified as Polymorph and characters can only have a single Polymorph effect on at the same time, which means you cannot change your form and still benefit from this. Earlier, remember to go with amulets that enhance your natural attacks, like Mighty Fists or Agile Fists. Armor doesn't really matter for a shifter, you don't even get the passive bonuses. As far as robes and shirts, you have two choices. The Robe of the Seven Sins is here to increase your caster level, because as a non-merged lich, you have lower caster level than usual. With this, you can increase it by a plus three, which can help increase not only the power of your spells like Vampiric Blade, but also their duration. Bestial Rags is what you want after casting these spells, however, as they are mostly buffs. For belts, at first belts that increase strength, later strength and dexterity, and well, that's it ultimately, since constitution won't really matter for a Lich, eventually. If you want the ultimate armor class possible for a Shifter character, you might also consider the Lizard Tail. With this, you can easily break 100 armor class. As far as braces, just the Paws of the Bear King, so we can get the bonus to natural attacks, when combined with Alexius, as you not have to rely on the amulets of natural attack later. For boots, I went with Stampede for the extra damage when charging, because this build is all about charging. The wolf, together with the dinosaur form anyways, that does give you pounds if you don't have a Scald party member. 
for headbands, early helmets of wisdom. Eventually, I just went with darkness caress because it's the one that increases your charisma and wisdom by the most. You can also go with Owl Skull earlier. For goggles, either Piercing Gaze for the extra damage. Actually, for the glasses slot, you might as well go with the Mask of the Rapid Bites. It's a new item added with the Shifter DLC, I'm kinda still getting the hang around the new items. So I've just found out about it. Whenever you make a bite attack for the first time in a round, you get another one as a free attack. The more bites we have, the better, especially with the Wolf form, but even with the Raptor too, because you can increase yours through the Shifter's Fury ability. As far as I'm aware, this also comes pretty early at Chapter 2 from Obrig's personal quest. For cloaks, at first cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier, eventually just the mythic special Lich Cloak, if you want to increase the power of your undead allies by a very nice amount. Don't forget you have another ally equipped with the Wrath of the Undead for the very nice undead boosting aura. For rings, Triumphant Advance is always going to be the best, and I also decided to go for the Ring of Evasion, as we can achieve high reflex as a shifter to avoid most spell damage. For the Bracers, just Animal Fury, for the extra boost to both damage and attack rolls, or we can just go for your Phylactery. As far as weapons, so this is actually important, I've just only learned that you can, amusingly enough, use the Hasty Eradicator Dagger to get yet another extra attack while under the Polymorph Shape effects, which is why we have 6 Bite Attacks, 5 by virtue of high base attack bonus together with Shifter's Fury and Haste, and the last one from Hasty Eradicator. So ultimately, if you want a melee shifter, always equip Hasty Eradicator. Who doesn't want an extra attack? Plus, you can get this decently early. At Chapter 3, it comes from Radius Quest at the Hell Knight's Outpost area. I wasn't able to get it to work on the Manticore, though, perhaps because it has ranged attacks. Anyway, sometimes if you load the game after changing into the form, you'll lose this extra attack but you can just change back, equip the weapon again, and do it once more. Who knows, maybe they'll patch this bonus out, but you might as well take it while it's hot. We also have the Fiery Spell Weaver Quarter Staff here, just like the Robe of the Seven Sins, just for when you're casting buffs to increase your caster level and spell power. As far as quick slots, we have a Meta Magic Rods package here, just remember, you can only use your Meta Magic Rods while under Humanoid form. You lose access to them when change into an animal shape. And we have Greater Quicken, Grandmasters for higher damage, which directly increases your hit points too. Extend Meta Magic Rods are amazing for increasing the duration of the Eyes of the Bowduck and Vampiric Blade spells. The Skeletal Finger can work too, as it has Leech unique bonuses. And as always, the Triceratops Statuette can grant you a pet for free if you want. Well, alright, so this was it for my first melee shifter build. Well, besides the Obri Companion. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you want to request videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!